Hi, good day. I am Dr. Kenneth Samonte and welcome to another session of K Explain. So today we will be talking about the Azure Instructional Design Model. The Azure model is an instructional system or guidelines that teachers can use to develop lesson plans which integrate the use of technology and media. And the Azure model places the focus on the learner and the overall outcome of accomplishing learning objectives. This Azure model is an enriched evolution of the Adi general model. Although the Azure model has six steps, which do not exactly correspond to Addis 5, Azure also presents a design basis and shares with it the two main features, the initial focus on analysis and the cyclic structure. Teachers prefer the Azure model because it is designed to be used for a few hours of instruction and for each individual student. And this model does not require high complexity of delivered media deep ID knowledge or high revision of designs. And the main difference between an experienced teacher and an expert teacher is that an expert teacher can easily decide on content, the appropriate teaching strategies, and the delivery major. The Azure model gives a new teachers a general roadmap to follow to help them think more like an expert teachers. The Azure model has six steps and each represented by a letter in the acronym title, with each step describing a set of tasks central to the informed selection and use of educational technology. The Azure acronym stands for these important components. A for analyze learners, state objectives, select methods, media and materials, utilize methods, media and materials, require learner participation and evaluate and revise. So let's take a look at that in detail. The first step in the Azure model is to analyze learners. To analyze the learners, you must examine the learner in detail. Like most things, without taking the time in the beginning to examine the learner, nothing you have prepared will be effective. And once you have an understanding and reasonable grasp for the learner's competence at the beginning of the instruction, the teacher can modify to assist the learner in their learning endeavors. As part of analyzing your learners, you must identify your audience. You must know the audience if you are to select the best medium to meet the objectives you have set. The audience can be analyzed in terms of their general characteristics with specific entity competencies and learning styles. First is the characteristics of the learners, and this general characteristics refers to the grade level, the age, the sex, mental, emotional, physical, or social problems, or even socioeconomic status. And the characteristics of learners depend on the reading skills, their ethnic or cultural subgroup, the learner's apathy, social background, and etc. The more advanced have a sufficient base for using audiovisual or even verbal materials. If learner apathy towards the subject matter is a problem, consider using a highly stimulating instructional approach such as a dramatic videotape or a simulation game. Learners entering a new conceptual area for the first time may need more direct, concrete kinds of experiences such as field trips or role-playing exercises. More advanced learners usually have a sufficient base for using audiovisual or even verbal materials. Second is the specific entry competencies and this competencies refers to the prior knowledge the skills and the attitudes about the topic at the beginning you have to assume that the learners lack the knowledge and skills but they possess the knowledge or skills needed to learn and understand from the lesson this assumption that learners have the prerequisite knowledge or skill to begin the lesson can seldom be accepted casually in school settings Teachers of mixed ability class routinely anticipate that some students will need remedial help before they are ready to begin a particular unit of instruction. This realization suggests that instructors must verify assumptions about entry competencies through informal means or more formal means such as testing with the standardized or teacher-made test. Third is the learning styles. 
And the learning styles refers to the visual, musical, verbal, or logical, etc. Learning style refers to a cluster of psychological traits that determine how an individual perceives, interacts with, and responds emotionally to learning environments. Gardner was dissatisfied with the concepts of IQ and its unitary view of intelligence. He identified eight aspects of intelligence. We have verbal or linguistic, logical or mathematical, naturalist, visual or spatial, musical or rhythmic, bodily kinesthetic, interpersonal, and intrapersonal. Second is state the objectives. The stated objectives are statements describing what the learner will do as a result of instruction. In other words, objectives are the learning outcomes, that is, what will the students will learn from the lesson. In order to develop proper objectives, you must frame them in terms of desired behavior, what the learner will be able to accomplish after completing the instruction. The objectives you use should be as specific as possible so the learner understands what they are to accomplish. If objectives are clearly and specifically stated, both the learning and teaching will become objective-oriented. Most objectives contain four parts, the audience, the behavior, the conditions, and the degree. A well-stated objective starts by naming the audience of learners for whom the objective is intended. You need to focus on what the learner is doing, not on what the teacher is doing. And learning is most likely to take place when the learner is active or mentally processing an idea or basically practicing a skill. Second is the behavior to be demonstrated. The heart of the objective is the verb describing the new capability that the audience will have after instruction. And this verb is most likely to communicate your content clearly if it is stated as an observable behavior. Next is the condition and the degree. And condition is how and what circumstances and objectives is to be observed. If such conditions are relevant, the final requirement of a well-stated objective is to indicate the standard by which acceptable performance will be judged. That includes what degree of accuracy or proficiency must the learner display, whether the criteria are stated in a quantitative or a qualitative terms. So I will give you a basic example of objective which includes the audience, the behavior, the condition, and the degree. At the end of the lesson, the students will be able to write clear learning objectives using the ABC method. Students as the audience. And the word write as the behavior. And using the ABC method as the condition and the word clear as now the degree. Once you know your audience and have a clear idea of what they should get out of the lesson, then this is the time to select the appropriate method for a given learning task, select available materials, modify existing materials, or design new materials to help accomplish this task. At this step, the instructor should connect the audience to the objectives. And to connect the two, the teacher must determine what method to use. A systematic plan for using media demands that the media be selected systematically at first. And the selection process has two stages. Number one is deciding on the appropriate method for the given learning task. First, it would be overly simplistic to believe that there is one method that is superior to all others or that serves all learning needs equally well. Teachers often structure assignments to allow the students with different preferred learning styles to pursue their individual practice through different methods. Number two, is choosing an appropriate media format and selecting, modifying, or designing the specific materials within that format. If you cannot locate any suitable materials, you can always modify what is available. This can be both challenging and creative. Next, we have utilize methods, media, and materials. The utilize methods, media, and materials step is where you develop your plan for, for implementing your media and materials. For each type of media or materials, the teacher selects and describes in how they are going to implement the media into your lesson to help your learners meet the lesson's objective. The media, materials, and technology selected should be focused on carrying out the selected method. 
If you decide to use electronic equipment, be sure to use it before, even practice if you have to. To ensure the equipment is functioning properly. In that same regard, it is also important to practice the lesson itself before introducing it to the learner. Next, prepare the room, the necessary equipment, and facilities. It may be obvious, but both the learners and the teachers should be prepared for the learning experience. To get the maximum learning impact from your presentation, you must follow certain utilization procedures. Number one is to preview the materials. No instructional material should be used blind. That's why during the selection process, you should have determined that the materials are appropriate for your audience and objectives. Second is to practice the presentation. After previewing the materials, you should practice your portion of the presentation. However, do not over-practice or the presentation will sound canned. Number three is to prepare the environment. Whether the presentation is to take place classroom, or auditorium, meeting room, or whatever the facilities will have to put in order, utilization of many media requires a darkened room or convenient power supply and access to light switches. The last one is to present the material. This is what you've been preparing for, so you will want to make the most of it. Our term for this is a showmanship. An instructor should be able to direct attention in the classroom. Next, we have required learner participation. The required learner participation step requires you to describe how you are going to get each learner actively and individually involved in the lesson. Students learn best when they're actively involved in the learning experience. Whatever your teaching strategy, be sure to incorporate questions and answers, discussions, group work, and hands-on activities, and other ways of getting students actively involved in the learning of the content. You should seek to pay close attention to your learners and feel confident that they are truly grasping the content and not just listening. Participating in the learning will facilitate this level of understanding. Allow them to construct knowledge as opposed to trying to teach them knowledge. Finally, for this step, feedback must be provided to learners before any type of evaluation is conducted. This fifth step in the Assure model is to provide the opportunities for learners to practice the capability being taught. And educators have long realized that participation in the learning process by the learner enhances learning. John Dewey urged reorganization of the curriculum and instruction to make student participation a central part of the process. The last step of the Assure method is evaluate student performance. Here, the evaluation should be much the objective. Ultimately, this last stage is most important. You must evaluate the instruction process from the start to finish using the objectives you created in the beginning. It is helpful to reflect on your objections, the instructional strategy, the instructional materials, and the assessment. By evaluating the learners against the objectives, it can be determined if the lesson was effective and whether any step needs to be modified or re-examined. The Azure model supports the field of educational technology. It is based on the principle that no one student acquires information in the same way. While the Azure model is used to systematically design instruction, it steps away from the traditional means of instruction to the use of technology to deliver the instruction. In conclusion, the Azure model has six components and each necessary for the successful implementation of instruction, including analyze learners, state objectives, select methods, media and materials, utilize media and materials, require learner participation, and evaluate and revise. So that is the basic overview of the Azure Instructional Design Model.